and submit. And resubmit. We're missing someone. Hi, I'm Ryan. Today we're going to look at the hardest problem on leak code. So here's my goal. I want to take a hard challenge and show you how to break it down into something that becomes approachable and easy. And if you go into an interview, don't expect this question to show up. It's too hard. But what will show up in an interview is the opportunity for you to take some hard problem and show, communicate how you make your decisions to turn it into a solvable and easy problem. Currently, less than 14 out of every 100 prob problems. Currently, less than 14 out of every 100 people who try this problem even succeed. And we're going to change that. So let's look at leak code problem number 420, strong password checker. Here's how it goes. Someone's signing up to our website and we want to make sure that their password's strong. A strong password has three criteria. It has to be of a certain length. It has to have at least one upper, one lower, and one digit. And it can't have repeating characters, two at most. And the question is, if their password's not strong, what's the minimum number of steps it takes to turn it into one that we define as strong? So this takes two steps and this takes three. Let's start coding. The hard part is figuring out how many steps it takes to turn their password into a strong one. But the question did give us one easy part, and that is, what is a strong password? And when there is an easy victory, take the easy victory. So what we're gonna do is come over, grab all the code that they give us, and before we even write this, we're just gonna write, is strong password. And if you're at an interview, just stop and think for a second and scratch your head and make them think you're thinking about this. But before I even consider the rest of the problem, I'm just gonna do the easy part. So here we go. We're gonna define is strong password, passing in password. And the honest reason why I'm starting here is because two days ago when I did this, I didn't know how to solve the problem. So this gives me a minute to think about it. And I can't stress this enough. When there's an easy victory, take the easy victory. Okay, so if the length of the password is less than six, return false. If it's greater than 20, return false. If there's a repeating index for a function we haven't written yet, return false. And then if it has upper, lower, and a digit, return true. And then by default, return false. That's all we have for the strong password. So we have two new functions to write, and this one's gonna be the easiest, has upper, lower, and digit. So we'll define has upper, lower, and digit, pass in self, and password. For any letter P in password, if P is upper, then we have upper, now we have lower, and now we have digit. And if the password has upper, has lower, and has digit, return true, else return false. And while we're at it, let's go back and say self min length is six, self max length 20, and we'll replace that in our function. Okay, so we just have one more function to write, find repeat index. So on this one, I'm gonna find out the exact location where a substring is repeating. So the very start of it. Find repeat index, pass in self and password. And there are many ways to do this. I'm just taking a easier way to read. So what I wanna do is break up the password into partitions. And every partition is repeating characters. For i in range of the length of the password, so for every letter, in fact, we'll start at element one and look backwards at element zero. If you're in any other language, this loop just says for int i is one, i is less than password.length i plus plus, and then we're gonna start looking at, we're gonna start looking at password sub i minus one versus password sub i. And in fact, if password sub i minus one is not the same as password sub i, so previous character and the current don't match, then in our array of partitions, we're just going to append from the last place that we had marked as the previous split up until now. Previous split gets i now. And we have to remember that when we're out of the for loop, the very last bit that we looked through gets appended to the partition as well. So the password at the previous split up to the very end, the length, gets added to partitions. So let's actually run this code. So we have a variable s for our solution class. And we're just going to run find repeat index on aaa b, 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 c, and up top, print partitions. Now I wanna know if we have any partitions that are three characters or longer. So for those who don't wanna write in Python, you just do a for loop across all partitions, and for each partition that we've created, we find out what its length is, and we return the max of all those lengths. And if there's no partition three or greater, we're just gonna return negative one as a sentinel to us, 
that it doesn't have a value for us to look through. If, however, we have one or more partitions that are length three or greater, they're not all equal value to us. So if we have one that's three a's, if we were to remove one a from that, we no longer have repetition. If we had one that was four a's, we have to do two steps to make this not have a repetition. So it's more valuable for us to remove partitions that are evenly divisible by three than it is for ones that are divisible by three plus one or three plus two. For this one with four a's, we could just turn one to a number or a different letter. That's one of the only tricks to this problem. So I need to track the modulo index. If the length is divisible evenly by three, that's the most valuable to us. If it's divisible by three with the remainder one, we don't care as much. Three with the remainder two, we also don't care. So if we have one that's evenly divisible by three, we're just gonna return. But if it's divisible by three plus one or three plus two, we're gonna track the index. So for every partition in our partitions, we're gonna get the length of the partition. If the length is less than three, it's not a repeat, so we don't care, we just push the index past it. And if the length mod three is perfectly divisible, then we return the index. And sometimes it's hard to code like this. Okay, where do you want to go? Where do you want to go? If length mod 3 is equal to 1, so it's 4, 7, 10, and so on in length, and we haven't found an index for this yet, then we're tracking it. Mod index 1 is the current index. That's to say, if there isn't one perfectly divisible by 3, then we'll take this mod 1 index instead. And I'll grab that code, paste it in, because if length mod 3 is divisible by 2, and the mod 2 index hasn't been found yet, then the mod 2 index is our current index. And if we haven't found something perfectly divisible or divisible by 3 plus 1, remainder 1, we'll take this instead. And if none of that worked, we'll just return the 0 with index. So that's the easy piece. And counter to what I thought going into this, that was a lot of code. In fact, as it turns out, that's about 40% of the entire solution right here. And this has got me to think that all we need to do is keep asking this question, is this a strong password? And as it turns out, at a very high level, that's the entire solution. It's just a loop. We loop, we perform an action, and we ask, is this a strong password? So we have a loop, an if, and a test. So let's write that. So strong password checker, it's simply going to be a while loop, and then an if. And I'd like to do this in the way of asking if it's too small, too large, or the right size, and then check if we've done the step to make it, to make it a strong password. Okay, so if the length of the password is too small, we'll do something. Else if it's too large, we'll do a different action. Else we know it's the right size, so we do our test. We'll probably have to do another action in here, but we still get to ask the question if it's a strong password. And if it is, we'll break from the loop and we'll return our total count. So we'll count the number of steps that we take, and at the bottom, we'll return it. So looking at our three choices, if it's less than the min, if it's greater than the max, or if it's already the right length, I know there's a finite set of operations if it's min, because it will grow very quickly to be over 6. I think that it's going to take more operations if it's already over 20, and we have to very selectively choose which characters to take out. And I think there's a probably combo of the two if it's already the right length. So I'm taking the easiest route first, and that's to write what it takes if the password's too short. So if the password's too short, all I have to do is add a character. It has to be at a certain position and it'll have to be a particular character. If we already have AA, we can't add a third. And if we already have five A's, we'll have to switch one and then add a different letter. So for that, we've already wrote part of the solution, and that's to see if there is an index where there's repetition. So self.findRepeatIndex, passing in password. And in fact, I'm actually gonna write this outside of the if because I have a feeling it's gonna matter, it actually really does matter for the other conditions. So I'll just say what the index is. So I'll call this my repeat index. I'll leave it out here. And for the if, I'll assume I can do something at the zero with index. And all I have to do is ask if repeat index is greater than negative one. That was our sentinel. If it didn't find anything, return negative one. Then our index will be that repeat index plus two because it was telling us where the repetition started. So if we add two characters, that's the one we need to change. That's our third character. Index is repeat index plus two. And no matter what, now we just have to add a character. And now we'll just write the function add character. Pass in password and tell it what index we want to add a character at. To make life easy, we'll return password. So define add character, pass in self, 
password, and index. So all we need to do is choose a filler character, so the most appropriate one. Again, if it's already all A's, we can't use another. And then we have to insert it at a location, and that location's index. So our filler character will be from a function of choose best characters, given the password and the index. And then we're going to splice. We're going to split the string in half, drop our character in the first half, then the filler character, then the last half. Now we have to write one more function. Define choose best character, and we're passing in the exact same parameters. OK, for this one, this is arbitrary. I'm going to say my filler character is the letter Z. It's just easier for me to read when I'm reading through the steps. If I need to have a lowercase, I need to switch it to lower. And if I need to have a number, I need to switch it to a number. So I'll write those conditions as well. So for the non-Python people, for every letter P in our password, if P is lower, we have it in a list. And if that list is empty, if that list does not exist, then we know that our filler has to be a lowercase. So I'll just switch it to lowercase z. And a similar question goes, for every letter P in password, if P is a digit, we create a list. But if that list does not exist, if it's empty, then we know we need a number. So we'll switch it over to a 9. And you can have any letter or any number. And finally, whatever character we've landed on, really the Z, if the same character at that index is our character, then we need to change it as well. So what this says is take the character, take the numeric value of it, subtract 1, and return it to a character. So if you have the letter Z, turn it into the ASCII value for Z, subtract 1, turn it into a character, and you have the letter Y. That's why I actually chose Z and 9, because we're subtracting 1. That will have given us the best choice. We're just going to return our filler character. And we called that when adding the character, and we made this adding character function by figuring out what do we need to do when the password is too short. So that's a third of the entire project right there. Now, because min length is on my mind, I'm going to solve max length. So max length is really close to min. In fact, I'm going to copy the code. But we don't really start at index. We do have this question if, if there is a repetition, we want to start deleting in the repetition. I'm not going to start at index. I have to do one more check, and I have to find a safe character to remove. Because if there's not repetition, we're just going to remove a random character. But suppose that password was ABCD1, and we removed the last character. Well, we've removed the only number, so we can't do that. So index, I'm going to tell it, instead of just the zero width, I need to remove a safe character. So self dot find safe character, passing in password. And to stay with our naming convention, self dot find safe index. So define, find safe index, pass in self and password. So for every character from i to the length minus one, we're going to reference this a lot, so I just want it short. It's just going to be p. We're going to pretend we can take this character out, and we're going to ask if the password still satisfies upper, lower, and digit. So truncated password equals the part before and the part after, but not character p. So if this character P is uppercase, and we have other uppercase letters in our truncated password, then we're OK. We can return index I. Same thing goes if the character P is lowercase, and there are other lowercase letters in the truncated password, this is an OK or a safe character. We can return index I. Finally, if it's a digit, and there are other digits in the password, we're OK. We can return the index I. But if we haven't returned yet, we just have to return 0. So that's fine safe index where we're guaranteed to not take out a character that we otherwise rely on for this being a strong password. Now we have the index. And if there are repetitions, we want to attack that first. So we found a safe index for a character we want to strip out of the password. But we're also going to check if there are repetitions. And if there are repetitions in the password, go to the index plus 2, so the third character. And that's the index we're going to use, repetition plus 2. So we're given the index. We don't even have to have a function for it. We'll just say the password is everything prior to the index and everything a character after the index. And that's all there is for 2 thirds of the problem now. The last bit is if we're already in the right zone, 6 to 20 characters. So for this, we have to pay attention to what we just did for max. And for the max, we needed to make sure we got a safe character. So if we're already of the right length, we don't have to add or remove characters. We just have to swap. So take an upper, make it lower. Take a letter, make it a different letter, something like that. And for that, we already wrote the code. Find a safe index. So if we're down here, we know it's not strong yet. We have to actually swap a character. So we have the index. We're going to use the exact same code again. If there is repetition, then our index is going to be that repetition. 
plus two, because it's the third character that's the real repeater. This part's a little intricate. We do have to change a character. So we'll write a function for it, passing in password and the index to change. So define, change character, passing in password and index, add in self. And at this point, we're really just reusing all the code that we've done before. So first we have to find the best character. And I'll just take that right from our add character function. Filler is gonna come from choose best character. And now here's a little Python thing. In any other language, this one's easy, but in Python, strings are immutable. So we're gonna have a temp list of our string characters. Temp sub index gets the filler character, and then we're gonna return the string value of that temp list. So in any other language, go to the index, swap your character out, return that, we're done. Now we're back on strong password checker. We've done the if it's too short, if it's too long, and if it's of the right size. As we go through this while loop, every time we loop, we just add a step to it, and we're gonna print out the password. If you've made it this far, thank you. And this is something that none of the solutions online allow for. They're all analytical solutions, which means they just solve the math. It's a trick. Because every single answer I have read online does not work. The analytical solution cannot be applied to a practical approach. So this is something that none of the solutions online do. None of them will show you exactly what steps you take to go from the starting password to a strong password. And you know, I'm gonna do one more thing. As I was debugging this, this actually really helped a lot more. I printed the password and its length so I could watch as it grew or as it shrunk. It tells me the number. We're just gonna test once more outside. So you can have an if run it, but you never get to this else test. So we have one more test. If you're a strong password, break out of the loop. Then we'll return steps. So before we actually submit, we'll do a quick check. Okay, I have a lot of passwords to check here. But the current one is 10 steps long. And okay, so I have a lot to check, uh, but we're actually gonna fix a little bug here or there. Truncated password I misspelled on line 26. Misspelled on 22. Is strong password on 118. <laughs> that looks good. The last bug in is strong password, I accidentally passed in self. I don't need to see partitions anymore. Okay, I forgot one bit of code. In find repeat index, we actually didn't do anything with mod one and mod two. So as we're going through the partitions we've created, if we found a perfect length, uh, modulo three, remainder is zero, we return. If we have it returned by the end of the loop, we need to return if we found an index for, for mod three equals one. So we return that value. And if we can't return there, and we did find mod two, mod three equals two, return that index, otherwise return zero. Okay, so I made one more book on find repeat index. So every time we loop through every one of our partitions, we're going to continue ahead at our index to the length of the one we just checked. Now when we check some passwords, perfect. So if you've watched this far, thank you. Um, and know that the more of these problems you do, the easier they get. And I solved this two days ago and I still had a hard time resolving it here. So I hope you have a great time.